Uh, g'day, yes, my, my name is Michael O'Malley and I've had a email from a student uh, asking you about timers. They can't understand timers, they can't understand how to set timers up, especially in regard to their assignments. Okay, so, and I, I think there's one other student that might have a problem with timers as well. So just to save uh, students uh, thrashing about, there might be others perhaps. <laughs> so I just thought I'd record a video um, to show how, how I go about setting up timers and to speak out loud as I do it so I can um, convey my thought processes and uh, build the project as we go. Okay, so we'll just walk through, we'll build a simple clock at the start which just has, has a, the date and time on, on in the label and then we'll improve that in subsequent iterations so we'll have something that's got a start button and a stop button and so on. Okay, so it's just sort of things you need to do uh, when you set up timers, especially when you've got start and stop buttons and things like that happening. Okay, so let's make a start. Um, so the first thing we do, I've got the cursor in the window there. So the first thing I always do is start with public class. That's a nice way to start. Um, I'll call it clock. Clock v v1, so clock version 1. And I'll make it just a windowed application, so extends. So that's how we'll go with that. I always put my opening closing curly brackets in, as people know when they watch me code. Um, so I'll just put that down there so I've got the closing curly brace commented. Okay, so now I'll save that. Java's my type, so that's correct. I'm saving it in the Java directory, so that's all good. Okay, so now we've got the colour coding in place. Now we're ready to start coding. Okay, so I want one label. So I'll have a J label. So new J label. I don't know what the time is yet, so I'll just set it to double quote, double quote. Just leave it uh, blank on screen. And uh, we need to add it to our user interface somehow. So we need a constructor. And like 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 uh, when people see make meme code, I always label closing curly brackets, so you can easily see where they start and end. Uh, and that's our constructor. Okay, so we've got everything nicely labeled so far. We've got a label, so we need to do an import. So we need to do an import for label, and we need to do another import for JFrame. So we've got our two imports there. Our public class extends JFrame, a simple label being added to the screen, and we just add that with an add statement. So let's add a main. Uh, we could set up a, a tester class or a driver class, and that's a good thing to do. But for this little example here, I'll just keep it all in the one file, just to make it easy. Otherwise, we're switching and chopping between files for the video. So let's just keep it all in one file, just for the video. So public static void main, good old public static void main. takes an array of strings and in here um, we just want to basically um, create an instance of our class so that's not a bad way to do it so that's anonymous uh, referencing there we're just creating an instance of our class and uh, we're not worrying about giving it a name okay um, yep now the only thing we need to do is make sure that our um, our interface is visible so we might, might want to do a set bounds there and something about this sort of size to do 300 pixels wide and 200 high should be enough or 300 high should be enough for what we're doing um, we need to set the, the frame to be visible because they're invisible by default so set visible to true and we need to we don't need to, but we will. We'll set the, the close operation. So what happens when the user clicks the little X icon in the top right hand corner of our application? So I'll set that up as well. We'll do all that at the same time. Um, that's the set default close operation method. Um, and we go J frame. Exit on close. Okay. So um, you can put those commands down here if you want in, in the main and if you do that you need to give your instance a name so that you can go uh, myapp.setbounds if you're doing it down in the main. We're actually do it up in your constructor as well, it's quite okay. So we'll do a compile there, I'll go control one, I'll use the shortcuts. Okay, so we've got one error there and, um, oh sorry, I've got the brackets right in the way. <laughs> New clock v1, sorry, I need to clean my glasses. Okay, so we're ready to go, so we can run it now and see what we get. Okay, so there's our interface there. Uh, there's nothing in the console window and um, there's nothing on screen at the moment because we've added a label and it's blank. Okay, so 
Um, it gives us a starting point for adding more, so let's do that now. Okay, so the next next step is to maybe add a timer object, and um, and we'll um, um, get that running, so we can start seeing the date and time on screen. Okay, and we'll set that into our label. So there's many ways you can do it, as we've seen in classes. You can create a class in here and um, um, add, a, add, a, add an object of that class to a, to a, to a listener for a button, or or the uh, or, or create a timer based on that. I tend to like creating all my classes at the top here, under my class data and under my GUI components. I create a class. We'll call it timer listener. Um, implements. Action listener. Hopefully, this is becoming fairly, fairly uh, comfortable for people now because um, you've created a lot of listeners. Hopefully, already. Uh, we need a, a, an action performed method to deal with our events, and it takes an action event object, which we can call whatever we like. I'll just call it um, E, because <laughs> um, we're not going to actually refer to it directly. So in here now. Uh, so we need to do a, do a couple more imports now for these objects. So that's import java.awt.event action listener and a similar sort of one for action event. Okay, so we've got our imports all in place. Let's just do another compiler and make sure it compiles. So I'll go control one. Good. So we're error free. And we know we're on the right track then. So in, in, the, in the timer, all we want to do is um, set the text of the label. To the current date and time, and we'll just use the default format, whatever that might be. So the easiest way to do that is just go plus new date. Okay, so we get the current system date and time, append that onto a string, and display it in the label. Okay, we're using dates now, so we need to do an import for dates. So you might be thinking, "Geez, how does it remember all those imports?" You use them enough, you become comfortable with them. And also, if you keep a list of all the imports you use, for example, in your summaries that you should be keeping, then uh, you can look them up very quickly. So let's do another compile to make sure that runs. Good. No error so far, so we're good to go. And the next thing we want to do is create a timer. Now, we can create the timer up here with class data, with the class data stuff, the GUI components, or we can create it down here in our constructor. Okay. For now, I'll create it down here in our constructor just to show you um, how we might need to move it around later if we add buttons to it. Okay. If I create it at the top, I wouldn't have to show you why we need to move it to where we need to move it later. So we'll do it down here for now. So I'll create a timer. T1 equals new timer. And we supply the delay between runs of the timer, or the number, number of milliseconds between runs. And we'll have it running once per second. So 1,000 milliseconds. Oops, comma. And then the listener we want to fire off when uh, the timer executes. And we'll just create a new of our timer listener up here. So it's just going to update the, the label with the current date and time. Okay, and then to start our timer, we go t1.start. Okay, and we need to do an import for, jar for timers as well. So go back up the top of our program, import java x.swing.timer. Okay, JavaX that should be. Let's do a compile. Cool, we're ready to go. Let's run it now and see what we get. So we'll run it as an application. Okay, so there's our application running. And you can see that we're getting the current time being displayed and it's updating every second. Okay, so so far so good. Okay, so um, you might want to pause the video here and um, just see if you can get your version of the clock v1 working. Okay, um, we'll just run through the code again. So we've got our imports at the top. Uh, I've called the class clock v1. It's just got a single label, no buttons, no menus, nothing, just a single label. Um, I've declared a listener object here, uh, a subclass, um, and that contains what will happen when the timer fires, when the timer executes, in other words. And all we're doing is setting the text of a label to the current date and time. Okay, whatever the default format is for dates and times, that's what we're using. In our constructor, I'm adding the clock to the user interface. I'm declaring a timer object with a 1000 millisecond delay between executions, starting off the timer, so kicking it off, starting it running, and then setting the bounds of our, our frame, setting the frame to visible, and activating the little X icon in the top right hand corner. Okay, 
and then our main just uh, uh, creates an instance of our class, so new clock v1. Okay, so that fires off the constructor, which builds our interface and kicks off the timer. Okay, so there's a little timer running. Um, so it's just updating every second. Just, sh just showing the current date and time. We've just got new date in here, new date. So it's just showing the current date and time in whatever the default format is. Okay, if you wanted a certain date and time format, you could use our good old date format uh, flags that we uh, cover back in visual programming. Okay, so back in week two or week three it was we did those back in visual programming. Okay, so um, you might want to pause the video now and uh, make sure you can get that, that working so far. Okay, let's now move along to the next stage of the example. And what we'll do now is we'll have it so the timer starts only when we click the start button. Okay, so we need to add a button. That's the first step. Let's add a button and add it to our user interface. So J button start equals new J button. And I'll give the label a start. <laughs> Not very imaginative, but that'll do. And we need an import for buttons if we're going to work with buttons. So import java x.swing.j button. That works nicely there. I'll call it clock v2 because we're going to make it the, at the next version of our clock. And I'll do a save as now. So I'll do a save as and I'll give it clock v2 as a name. So we can keep a backup of our previous example. Okay. Now we need to add that button to the user interface. So we need to come down here to our add commands in our constructor and add the button there to our user interface. Now we're adding two components to our user interface there and by default our user interface can only take one component at a time. So what we need to do is make sure our user interface is set to having a flow layout. Otherwise only one of those components will appear. Okay, so set layout. A new flow layout. So we're giving our user interface a flow layout and we're adding a label and adding a button. Okay, so we need to do an import for for those import and it's a Java AWT import dot flow layer. Okay, let's do a compile, make sure. Oops, I've got one error there. That's good. Uh, oh, sorry, we're still using a clock v1 constructor. So we've changed the name of our class, uh, but we're still using clock v1. So we need to go through and change all our clock v1s to clock v2s. So clock v2 there. And don't forget to change that one in the main, clock v2. Okay, let's do another compile. Another button, another error there. Ah, I've got Java comma, Java X comma swing. Okay, so we'll fix that up. Cool. Okay, so we've got errors, no errors there. This is a live example and I've got some glasses on here and I'm working in a little small area to make sure there's not much um, lip sync problems with the video. So I'm working in a very small window and uh, my eyes aren't the best. So I'm, I'm seeing commas where, semi, where full stop should be and so on. So please forgive that. Let's run that and see how that works. Okay, so this, that's what we end up there. We've got the start button and the, and the date and time being displayed. Now we've still got the timer being kicked off in our constructor, so it's still automatically starting. And we haven't actually created a, an event listener for our uh, for our start button yet. If we click that, it does nothing. There's no uh, action listener added to it yet. So that's what we need to do now, is make our button active and make it so it kicks off the timer. Okay, so we need a, a, a listener, another inner class. Like I said earlier, I, I tend to do all my inner classes uh, just under my class data there, near the top of the program. Uh, start listener. Implements action listener, just like before. In fact, I can save myself a bit of typing by copying and pasting that. Okay, another good thing to do once you start getting a few classes, uh, especially if you get, uh, you know, a couple or more, um, is start putting comments on your closing braces, just so you know which one they belong to. Okay, it's always a good thing to do because you end up with classes that are quite big soon and lots of code. So in here is going to be our start. Thank you.